All right, YouTube. At the now we're going to do a, a TX A2340 series machine. A little scutcheon plate's missing. This is a 2340. You can use this video for a 2340S or a 2340SX. Uh, now we're going to go through all of the basic aspects of cleaning, lubricating, fixing all the disabling failures. This does not include any fancy stuff like alignments or anything like that. This is just to get it working. Typically when you see one of these machines, the first thing you notice that the pinch roller is frozen. Utterly frozen. Like I can wail on this and it's not going to move. Uh, these may be sticky. This one's alright. This one's still got the dampening in it, which is good. Uh, someone's been messing with the heights of the reel tables here. You can see the gap uh, it's between the reel plate and the uh, backing plate there. That's adjustable with this screw. And the best thing to do is to set the machine on its butt and uh, run tape and see which one needs to be brought in or out. So the next thing let's do is let's get the back off and I'll show you with the familiars of the interior. Alright, so when you get the back off your 2340, this is what you're going to see. You've got your Real table motors here, your main capstan motor, your flywheel, and behind this plate here uh, is the pivot bearing for the pinch roller lift assembly, which is frozen. Uh, other points of failure have to do with that micro switch right there, uh, which <coughs> commonly dies. And the way it dies is either one of two ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Either the little plunger will break off, uh, which will mean that the switch will go beyond the little Pac-Man detent there, or the switch will just open and you'll lift the arm up but nothing will start. Uh, those are the two common things that go wrong. Uh, let's see, what else? I'm trying to think of anything else that's a common point of failure on these machines, but they're much more straightforward than the 4010 that you saw me do the video of there. So, the next thing you want to do is get this card out of the way, which is done by these two screws down here. And that will allow you to loosen up the backing plate, which is the thrust bearing for the uh, capstan, and get to the uh, pinch roller arm assembly, which is frozen, because you don't want to break this off. That's no fun. And it's only being held up by a small bracket with these two screws, so it's prone to bending and flexing. Um, so let's get that out and then we'll focus on getting the backing plate off. So now with that removed you see that I got a clear view shot to the uh, capstan flywheel and uh, what you want to do is you want to undo the screws that hold the little wire brackets on and then this one here and this one at the other side pop them out and we'll pull this off and then we can get to the uh, the next necessary items. So let's get that off. Okay, so with the backing plate off, you now have your uh, capstan exposed. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the belt on this is a little tired. Obviously, it's very much lost its elasticity. Uh, taking the belt off is pretty easy. Obviously, just slide it off of the capstan flywheel like this. And you're going to have to be a little dexterous and slip your fingers up and over the motor pulley sticking out to get the remainder of the belt off. This is always a little fun. Some of these have dual voltage pulleys, or dual frequency pulleys I should say, that are 50 and 60 cycle. And that can make things difficult, like this one, because you have less and less space to deal with. Well, let's see if I can get it off without the urge to destroy it. I'm going to have to put a new belt on anyways. That's, uh, oh yeah, so stretched out it's unbelievable. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is get the capstan out. As you can see, there's a stop here. And that stop is on the front of the machine. Now if we rotate to the front and we look at the capstan sleeve that's sticking out here, 
uh, to make this easier, unscrew the cap that holds the pinch roller on. Pull the pinch roller off. And now this comes loose. And take this cap off. And I don't know if you can see it in there. There's a little rubber thing. It's holding it in place. That needs to come out. And the best way to do that <coughs> is just to take a little screwdriver and just kind of very carefully pry around the edges until you get it up over the lip. While taking care not to scar up your capstan too much. And grab a hold of it and pull the little rubber retainer off. And this will allow you to get your capstan flywheel out. And if your capstan's dirty, clean it before you do this so it doesn't scar the bearing. But just stick your three fingers in there like a bowling ball and pull the little bugger out. Just like that. And so now we have exposed why we're here which is this pinch roller arm lift sleeve here, which freezes in almost every one of these, unless it's been serviced. So in order to get this apart, we're going to need to remove the screws on the uh, capstan uh, bearing here. There's one here and one up here. Those have to come out. And then also, on the arm itself, I don't know if you can see that back there, there are two more screws. There's this guy and this guy. They have to come out. Now once those are relieved, then we have to apply heat to that bearing. And typically I will do it by means of a heat gun. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, just really croupy today. You can do it by means of a heat gun. Uh, you can do soldering irons, whatever, to apply direct heat to that area without cooking that little plastic switch too much or obviously the little wiring harness thing that we're pulling aside here. Uh, and then we're going to grab it, literally, just grab it with a set of uh, uh, channel locks and pull it out. So I'm going to take the screws loose here and the bracket off. Uh, if you're confused about orientation, you can, this is up to you if you've got a good photographic memory, uh, you can draw a little line. Wow, the camera does not pick that up for crap. Look at that. Okay, well, I put a line there, a locating mark. You can do that if you want to. So I'm going to pop that little bracket off, and then we're going to loosen the two small screws up there, connecting the pinch roller arm lift to the solenoid, and then we're going to bust out the heat gun and see if we can't get this thing loose, and we'll get it apart. Just a little pointer. When you get to the part where you have to release the two screws from the solenoid, it's really helpful to have one of these. You can use the little short subby screwdriver, but if you've got big fat hands like I do, that doesn't always work right. I like to have one of these to get the screws started, uh, which you can't see now because my big fat hands are in the way. But anyways, this gets in here real nice and makes it a lot easier to pop these loose. It's hard to do this single-handed, so I apologize. But once you get these loose, then you can work at them with your little stubby screwdriver. It's not possible for me to bust them loose with one hand, so we'll pause while I get the rest of this loose, and then we'll get the heat gun. All right, so you can see now I've got the two screws off, and the little solenoid actuator is loose. Uh, since we already removed our pinch roller, uh, we just need to apply heat to this. I'm going to use the heat gun and a pair of channel locks, and we're just going to pull the thing off. So let me get the camera position so you can see me do it, and then we'll get to it. Okay, we're all set to go. I'm going to pull this aside. This is a 1200 watt heat gun on a high setting.
All right, should be enough. Let's get our channel locks. Yeah, let's start pulling. Yep, it's gonna come right off. Excellent. Pull it out, and we're gonna set it down on a non-flammable surface, let it cool. <clears throat> okay, so that's off. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here if I can. Look at the work area here. All right, so now what we wanna do, while that's cooling, since the grease is still in somewhat of a liquid state, you wanna get your bottle of alcohol and a Q-tip and go to town on that bushing and clean all the old grease off. Don't leave a little, any little bit of it on there. Or you're going to have troubles later on when the old grease hardens again, even with the new oil on it. So we'll just clean all that up. And we'll do the same with the uh, control or lift arm that we just pulled out. Obviously I'm going to hold it with some pliers since it's still incredibly hot. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to clean this one out too. Same method. Q-tip and some alcohol. Okay, we've got that down. And the next thing we're going to do is just get some good high temperature machine oil and coat that bearing. And do the same for the uh, pinch roller arm. Alright, we're just going to let those cool. Now while you're in here, uh, it may be of use to check the movement of the tape lifters here. Um, they get sticky too. These ones are okay. If they get sticky, loosen that screw. Be careful not to lose the little brass sleeve insert bushing that's around the screw. And clean and lube them as you would the uh, uh, pinch roller arm that we're doing just now. <coughs> Uh, so take care of that, and I'm going to go ahead and wait for the um, arm to cool down, and then we'll put it back together. In the meantime, I'm going to go grab a belt for this thing. Now, as I've mentioned before, you can simply give a call to TX Parts Department, and they will supply you with the correct belt. The 2300, 4300, and 3440 series all use the same drive belt. And I think it's about, including shipping, it's just a hair shy of $20, but that may have changed. The last time I ordered them was about six months ago. This is the last one, so I'm going to have to reorder them today. But uh, it's direct from TEC. It's a brand new belt. It's not old stock. And it's thick, and it's the correct type. So uh, we're going to get that on there as soon as we get everything else back together and get the flywheel back in. All right, so now that the arm has had a chance to cool down, we've got the oil on it, we're going to put it back together. And I'm just going to slide this back in here as I took it out and slide it over top of the bearing, push the uh, solenoid thing, that little bracket thing, I don't know if you can see that, maybe you can't. This has got to get pushed out of the way so you can slide this on. and. Should just go in just like that. Camera's not focusing anymore. All right. So that's what you want right there. Uh, if you want a little bit of added uh, protection, you could add a little tiny bit of molly grease or something on the edge of this, which the rocker pin slides up and down on. 
that's entirely up to you. And then installation is just to reverse. Uh, we have to reattach the two screws here to the solenoid. Um, make sure you get them good and tight. If you want to augment them with Loctite, it wouldn't hurt them. And then we're going to put the little plate back on here. Uh, clean and lube the flywheel, the capstan flywheel bushing, and push it back in there. Put the little retainer on, and then we'll get the belt in. Okay, so here's what it looks like all back together. You can now see that the pinch roller arm moves very freely, which is precisely what we want. Now we got to get the capstan flywheel back in there. And this would be a good time to clean and lubricate this, which again can be done with uh, alcohol and a Q-tip, which is what we're going to do now. And just go up and down the bearing shaft, make sure it's nice and clean. Uh, also make sure your capstan surface is clean as well. These are often things that people neglect on a reel-to-reel. -reel. They don't think that everything has to be spotless, but you really can't leave any of this old garbage behind. Well, you will mar the bearing, uh, pushing the flywheel back into the sleeve bearing here. Uh, also, if you see any of these, these little fiber washers, uh, make sure you know where they go. This one actually is for the, uh, this one doesn't fit the capstans. The only other one is the uh, pinch roller. It probably goes on the front of the pinch roller when we took the cap off. So, uh, now that that's been done, grab your oiler again and just coat. Note how I'm coating this and not the tape surface. Um, <clears throat> I want to keep as much lubricant off that as possible. Line it up. And again, you can use your three fingers to guide it. Makes it easier. And there we go. Happy flywheel. Okay, so the next thing to do is to get the new belt on. This is the fun part because we have the dual size pulley. If this were just an American model with a 60 hertz pulley, it would be easy. But the uh, double pulley sticks out wider. Uh, so what you're doing is you want to feel the difference of the pulleys. Or you can get a mirror. Let's try a mirror. I can kind of sort of feel it. Uh, let's get a mirror back here. Trying to see if you can see. It's hard to tell from my vantage, but if we look in the little mirror, we see that the front pulley is the larger of the two. The larger of the two is 50 cycles. We don't want that. We want the 60 cycle pulley, which is the smaller of the two towards the back of the, of the pulley, the front of the motor. So there's no real way to show you how to get the belt on here. You just kind of have to feel it. <clears throat> but I'll place it in my fingers like this. And the hardest part is getting it over the motor pulley. But you need to do that. Uh, slide it across the front. Okay. And then I'll wrap it around the flywheel like this. And now that you've got it in both places, work the belt onto the smaller of the two pulleys. And give it a couple rotations. And we can see that it held there, so that's good. Excellent. So that's in there. Now all we need to do is get the uh, uh, thrust plate back on and uh, get our wiring clamps back on. And that will be the first part of the service. Now before you get the bearing plate back on, take a note that the point contact is offset. And... Uh, from your vantage, the bearing contact plate needs to be more this way. Because uh, if you look at the motor, you can see that the uh, thrust bearing is offset to the left somewhat. So just take note of that. Otherwise, uh, 
you'll bash this into a screw and you'll really mess it up. So just don't do that. If you want, before you take it apart, you can always mark it, but it's pretty easy to see that it is offset a little bit. So just match it up and you should be fine. All right, so you can see we've got everything back together as far as the flywheel now. A little bit of play there. We got everything routed back up. So now we'll reinstall the little cart we have here. And uh, once we do that, then we'll do uh, more kind of basic maintenance and then we'll do a test. Okay, so we've got everything back together back here, including the little stand up board. Uh, now the next thing to do is remember that little rubber sleeve that we took out for the capstan. Make sure to reinstall that. If you want to be extra cautious, you can put a couple of drops of oil right in here. Not too much though, just enough. And then we'll put the little rubber sleeve back in. You may have to push this against the little ledge with your uh, screwdriver. And let's set the camera down a second. All right, all back in there. We'll put the little cap back on. Okay, and now, before you put the pinch roller on, you might want to check its condition. This one actually looks okay. It's not all shiny and hard and doesn't have a tape track worn in it. If it does, get some thousand grit sandpaper and resurface it. And I'll go across the sandpaper as I rotate it to apply even amounts of uh, abrasiveness to it. But since this one's okay, we'll just put a drop of oil on the sleeve here, put it back on, and then that little fibrous washer we had earlier goes on the front here like this. And then this cap, don't cross thread it, goes on the front here like this. Wonderful. Okay. Let's get to oiling the motors. I'll show you how to do that. That's pretty easy. Um, let's get this towel out of here. This thing's pissing me off. I put the towel down for machines I'm worried about scratching, but this one not so much. All right. Uh, so at the top of all TX motors of the AC variety, you see these little spout looking things. Those are your oil spouts and you will need an oiler to do them properly. You've got two here front and back for each motor. You've got one here front and back for your real motors. I don't know if you can see the other one. I think this is burying it. It's sticking up there. Uh, the last one you of course will need to pull up this board but that's just two screws and then you can get to it easily enough. Um, I'm not going to use the giant oiler. I'm going to use a small one and I'm going to take the needle off of it and what we're going to do is try to make it so that the camera can see this but it doesn't want to focus today I guess that's good enough um, I have the opening drilled just for this type of spout so I'm going to cover the opening maybe if I do it this way Yeah, that works better. Okay, so you guys can see this a little bit better now. Hopefully the camera doesn't fall, but... I'm just going to pump oil down these little spouts until they start to overflow. There we go. Starting to get a little oil around the base here. And we're going to try to do the same with the other one over here, although you can't really see it very well. Hmm. Maybe if I show you from this vantage instead. Sorry for all this camera movement. I don't really have a tripod, so 
This is all done with a phone camera. It's not very good. And it keep, keeps wanting to focus on other things. So we'll come down in here from the top. Uh, this one's not going to cooperate. This one I'm probably going to have to use the needle for because it wants to move. In that case, we'll stick the needle down in to the little tube. And then we'll put the squeeze on it. And I just keep going until the filler tube overflows, and then I know the reservoir is full. Okay. If you fill it more than that, what you'll find is that the silly thing will just gush all over your nice new belt, which is what you don't want. Okay, so let's come up to this one. All right, it's starting to overflow there at the bottom. And you can't really see the other one. We're going to do this one too. Okay, now this one, of course, you have to pop the screws out, so let's just do that right here and now. Oh, I just noticed something. There are the oilers. I don't need to take this out. I'm thinking of the 4300 or 3340. One of those two, you have to take that board out. I was just going from memory. Okay, well, let's get this screw and put it back in, and then we'll just finish the oil job on the motors. Oh, come on, really? There we go. Close enough. Oil your motors, Phil, thank you. TX made these great AC motors. They certainly aren't to the quality that they uh, are. They're certainly better than the quality of the later ones like the, in the ones in the X-Series. Okay, now finally uh, we're going to do a chemical treatment of the switches and controls. Uh, they're all pretty easy to get to. I don't know if you can see them down there. There's your input and output level controls. They're kind of cascaded here. And as I have mentioned so many times before, the thing to use is a, keg, a can of keg deoxide with an extension on it. A little bit of heat shrink tubing, you can see, is good for an extension. And I'm just going to get in here and spray these things. And we're going to do the uh, speed control first. And then we'll do the controls back in here. Trying to do it so you can see what I'm up to here. See, the extension obviously makes it nice because then you don't have to fight with getting the giant cannon there.
Okie dokie. So we got that. Got the cleaner in there. <clears throat> and there's our tape speed we just did. Our output level controls. This is the fun, boring part where you just sit there and work these things. I know this was everybody's, what, what everyone was looking forward to seeing today was me turning a bunch of knobs and stuff. I know it's not very exciting. But I want to show you how to do the switches without having to disassemble the entire front of the machine or go in through the back through all the crowded area. Now after you do this process, as long as you keep using them, the deox will almost always keep them clean. The problem is people let their stuff sit too long or they just use the switches and controls that they commonly use rather than exercising them all. Alright, there's that. Oops. Okay, so the next thing of attention, you want to clean the SimulSync switches too, because they get horribly dirty and they cause all sorts of signal loss problems. So we're just going to take this apart, pull the cover off. This screw's stubborn. Okay, so now you see these big switches here, and what you want to do is take your deox and go in from the side. Use the lowest spray setting possible so you don't get a bunch of overspray. And you can also go in through the little top vents too, which I'd recommend. That way you don't get it all over your pinch roller. The 2340 and the 40, 3440 were kind of like the garage band wet dream because with the SimulSync it allow you to dub over everything and you could mix your tracks without having a fancy mixer board. I mean, yeah, you only had four channels, but still, if you were a poor garage band trying to make it, this was the type of thing to own. It was cheaper than the Fostex or the Revox or having an outboard controller. It was literally a miniature studio. I think the only difference was that the fastest this did was seven and a half, and it only did seven inch reels, and the 3440 does 15 inches per second and 10 inch reels, so it was a higher quality sound reproduction. Okay, so that's done. We can put this back on here now. Somebody put a screw in here that wasn't designed for it, but it works, so I'm not going to mess with it. Now the next thing you want to do is to put the machine on its back. If I can do that while holding the camera. Oh, there we go. So the other thing you want to do are the source tape switches. Now if you put them in the tape position, or the upmost position, 
I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little opening that appears at the bottom of the shutter window of the switch, which is where you inject your contact cleaner. And that's true of the source tape as well as we push up the bias and record things. You can see all those little windows pop open. You can get the cleaner in there and work them that way. I recommend that. Uh, in fact, that's what we're going to do here. And so since I've already shown you, well, we're just going to take one little spritz and go in here like this. Get the cleaner in there and then work it like crazy. Do that on all your switches. Okay, so we're going to do that. Not filming it since that's boring. Also, this is a good opportunity to uh, clean your heads, which you can do by means of uh, Q-tip and an alcohol. If you've got really chunky heads that have a lot of garbage on them, uh, you can often let's see. Getting some light on that will help focus better. There we go. Uh, you can get a lemon wood stick and scrape off the gunk on the heads. The reason why you use a lemon wood stick is because, well, it's not as hard as the metal and it's less likely to scratch or braid it. These heads actually have minimal wear on them. There's not a very big gap at all, so I think that this is going to turn out really nice when we're all done cleaning it up. Uh, the heads already look pretty good on this. I guess the guy already cleaned them, so there's not much more I need to do. So I'm going to finish chemically treating the uh, switches and controls, and then we're going to plug it in and see if it plays. Okay, we get it all back together and a tape loaded on it. Let's see what she does. I won't be able to play the music very long because of the copyright Nazis. Got a good deflection. Breaks. Cool. So it is working. Let's see if the auto shutoff works. I assume it will. All right. So this thing's done. Just got to put the back back on it and give it back to the owner. So I hope you find this video useful. Uh, you could use some of these uh, or most of these the servicing information for a 3440, um, perhaps even a 4300 since they use very similar tape transports. But I uh, hope this was useful to you, and uh, more stuff to come soon.